Okay, welcome everyone. Let's get started. Uh, my name is Ingmarie de Kruse, so I run this uh, uh, seminar series together with Martha from MediaX and some other folks. Um, so it's a real pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Randy Lee. So Randy has a bachelor's degree in engineering and an MBA from UC Davis, and he's currently the head of business development in North America for Tencent. So for those of you who don't know, Tencent is one of the largest internet companies. It's based in China. And it is, provides many services, and among those, uh, mobile games and multiplayer online games. And uh, based on revenue, it's actually the largest uh, gaming company in the world. So great to have him here. Um, his responsibilities include investment, licensing, developer and partner relations, and strategic growth initiatives, all related to gaming and uh, entertainment. And prior to Tencent, he also worked in some other companies, among those uh, uh, Crowdstar, which was also a gaming-related uh, company. So, and it's a pleasure to have Randy here. Let's give him a warm applause. Thanks for having me, everyone. Uh, so just show of hands, who actually, who's, who are gamers in this room? I'm assuming many of you are. Um, what, what, what do you play? Uh, just play Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah? Yeah. yeah so that's, is that the main one? So you're mainly PC, PC player? Yeah, you play? Yeah. yeah. How about you? Uh, like StarCraft too. Okay. Uh, like Blizzard, Blizzard stuff. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Any mobile gamers? No mobile gamers? Wow. It's a big, it's a big business right now. Uh, I'm surprised. So actually quite a few core. And then is it mostly, uh, who, raise your hand if you're console. So a few console. And then PC, I'm assuming the rest. How about the league, league players? One. Wow. <laughs> Is Dota? Dota players? No? Okay. Well, again, thanks for having me. Uh, so I joined Tencent about two, a little over two years ago. I had head up our uh, North America business development team. And as I Igmar mentioned, I basically, uh, we have a team of 10, and we do basically gaming developer re re uh, relations. And what that means is that, one, is we look for great opportunities or interesting games in the West that we want to bring to China. Uh, and two, we look for investment opportunities that we want to do that we think the, the team is very strategic or important to us in the West in terms of our growth. Uh, and then three, any new type of strategies. And that includes kind of different things that we may try to do in, in the West. So I have a couple of slides here. Good news is that I, you know, the, the, I have like five or six slides that talks a little bit about Tencent. Um, so I won't be talking too much. Bad news is I hope that we can actually have a pretty good interaction in terms of what you guys think we should do in the West in terms of games. So, um, so first question actually I have is, anyone know our market cap? So we are, uh, our market cap as of this morning, we're traded on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, about $275 billion. Um, the majority of our revenue is, does come from what the business group I'm in, which is IEG, Interactive Entertainment Group, and that's mainly games. But we also have a group that does film, we have a group that does literature, all within IEG. So we think of it as not just games, but entertainment across our platform. Um, how we're different than like, what you know of Facebook uh, is that Facebook basically monetizes with ads across their social graph, and we monetize with entertainment. So besides games, we have licenses to like, the NBA, uh, HBO content, a lot of movie content, Star Wars we, br we brought onto the platform. So our monetization strategy is a little bit different than kind of what we see in the West, partially because kind of the ecosystem in China is different. Um, there just isn't a mature kind of ad business like we have in the West, and companies don't value ads as much as they, they, they do here in terms of spending dollars on ad dollars. So this is a little bit about uh, the China market. Um, about $24 billion gaming market, uh, 600 million gamers, and an annual spend of about $122. Uh, so this is numbers from Yuzu. Uh, North America actually is shy of this now. It's about $23 billion. So over the last year, the China gaming market has grown bigger than the market that we have here. Uh, annual spend per payer for, for North America is around $220, so it's, it's actually quite a bit higher, uh, which, which, is, um, which uh, obviously is a healthy thing for us here, but hopefully there's a lot of growth on the China front. Um, so we rank number one in, in the world in terms of market size. Uh, it's growing around 8.1%, and we have about one-third of all the gamers in the world are in our markets. Um, and it's expected to reach about $29 billion dollars in 2019, so it's a, it's a big market. Um, if you look at this also, one of the things to think about is that if you, you know, the, the mobile market actually, for mobile games, 
last year in China actually eclipsed also the U.S. So mobile game market now is bigger in China than it is in, in, in the U.S., and that just happened last year. The console market is fairly large here in the U.S. I think it's around 11, 11 $12 billion. In China, it's like nothing. Uh, for decades, console has been uh, kind of banned from China, and about a year, a year and a half ago, the government allowed consoles. So Sony now and Xbox is selling console in China. Um, but the big, big chunk for us is PC. So the PC market is really big in China. It's not growing as fast as mobile, but it's, you know, most of our, our players are on, on, on the PC side. Uh, this is something else I think for a lot of you who don't know who Tencent is. Um, from the gaming side, we are the, the largest company in, in the world in terms of revenue. So last year, around $10 billion. Uh, I don't believe this has Supercell numbers in there. Uh, it probably doesn't have League Riot numbers in there. Uh, so it's significantly greater than the, the next player, uh, Sony, at around 7.8. Xbox is like $6 billion. Uh, and then you StarCraft players, Activision, $6.6 .6 billion. So in terms of games, that's, that's kind of a, an area that uh, we really think is kind of our, our core and, and our key to our success. NetEase is actually the other Chinese player. Uh, they've done very well over the last year, two years. Uh, they're about $4, $4 billion. Really, they have a few games out in, in the West that's, that's doing okay, and then uh, they have some great mo mobile titles. They've done a great push over the last two years getting to mobile. So the market in China traditionally has been MMORPGs, right? So 10, 12, 12 years ago, you have companies like Perfect World, Shonda, The Nine. So all of these players really played in the MMO market. Nobody really had a big majority share of it, and everyone had you know, 10, 20% of that market. And for us, uh, what we decided to do was to look outside. And this is where I think for Tencent it makes us a little bit different because we're willing to take risks. We believe gamers in China will play the same games that players in, in, in the West play. So we brought basically, we call ourselves kind of genre creators. We brought new genres to the market. So shooters, at the time when everyone was playing MMOs, no one was gonna, you know, there's no such game, no shooter in the market. We went to Korea and brought, brought over Smilegate's Crossfire. Crossfire is now the number one shooter in the marketplace. Um, since Crossfire, we actually also did a deal with COD. So we have a Call of Duty online game that we've, we've launched in China. Uh, MOBAs as well, right? So Riot's done very well in the West with MOBAs. We made an investment in Riot years ago, and we've since brought League into China. And it's, it's one of the, the, the largest uh, PC games in the world. Uh, and it's doing very well in China. And then sports. Uh, sports is, is an interesting one because it, traditionally Chinese don't really play a lot of sports games and they never have. So when we first brought in uh, NBA 2K and then since we've signed FIFA Online, you know, what they wanted on the sports game, and this is when we were talking to, to uh, 2K, was that you know, it was kind of the old game of NBA Jam. I don't know if you guys remember that arcade game. It's kind of a two-on-two, -two, you can catch on fire, you're dunking. It's kind of a very arcadey type game. Um, and then NBA 2K is very much a simulation type game. They want it to be true to the franchise. They want players to feel real. They didn't want any of that, that stuff. But what we, to, do, to introduce kind of a new genre into the, the market, you kind of have to guide the players through. So um, within NBA 2K Online, we built kind of a street mode. And again, it's working closely with our partners because they had to stay, like, uh, they wanted to stay true to the franchise is that even within the street mode, you could do a two-on-two, -two, you could do a three-on-three, -three, you could mix players. Um, but it, it got us kind of to that NBA Jam feel, right? So it's moving them from basic two-on-two -two NBA Jam type game into a full sim. And if you look at today's games in the West, you're doing, you're the manager of the team, you're trading players, you're, you're managing the franchise. You know, we have to, it, by introducing new genres to the market, we actually have to take them through this flow one at a time. If we just launch a game, a full, say, Madden game, even though we wouldn't, we wouldn't do that because American football is not big there, we, wouldn't, we can't kind of throw out all the features in, into the China market because they just the, the Chinese players aren't used to that full-blown kind of feature set. So um, you know, we've been very successful with how we bring games to the market. Crossfire, if you guys ever look at it, it's the most basic shooter. Um, very simple. Graphics aren't you know, uh, like cutting edge. But it's something that if you want to introduce a new genre into a market, you have to make sure you bring the players through it. Uh, so with COD, it's actually much more advanced. Graphics are higher end. And the thinking is, you know, once they graduate from kind of a basic game, they want to do something more complex, and we have to move them up, up the chain. So part of uh, the things we do out west is on the licensing front, right? Look for new opportunities in, in the west, new genres that we want to bring, bring to China. 
I would say of all the gaming companies in China, we're probably the, the most successful and the only one that's been able to do it successfully. Uh, like I said, NetEase has done very well, uh, but they're staying kind of within their MMO space. So with the, that approach, actually, we, we've been able to take the market. Um, MMO market, 16%. There really isn't a lot of players. There's no one that has 70%. It's just kind of divided and, and split up within that, that category. But shooters, action games, MOBA, sports, music, racing, uh, I think we signed Need, Need for Speed, the EA game. So we have that one that we've uh, either launched or we're bringing to China. So those are all pretty clear uh, what we call ourselves and what we want to go for is genre leadership. Uh, if I was to ask you kind of what's the number one shooter in the West, you probably would say COD. Maybe you'll say Battlefield. What's the number three one? Nobody really knows. If you look across the board, you, you look at MOBAs. You know League, you know Dota. You don't really know the third one. So it's really important as we think about games, we think about genres, and we think about taking kind of how do you become the category leader in that genre. Uh, Browser-based games, 43%. Mobile games, big market. Uh, we have 53% of that market uh, in China. And the table games are kind of like Mahjong, poker, those type of things. Um, I wouldn't say it's a big focus for us, but it's still an area because we serve such a large platform. Uh, we have to make sure all the users have some, something to, to play with. So I guess in summary, if you think about what we've done in China is that we've brought over new genres into the market. We've introduced them on our platform. And I, are you guys familiar with kind of Tencent and the social platforms we have? No? OK. So I should probably should back up a little bit. So uh, how I mentioned with Facebook, right, they have their social platform. Um, we also have our own. Uh, we have QQ, which started on PC. Now we have QQ Mobile. And then we have WeChat. So WeChat's probably the the most successful one right now in that a lot of the companies in the West are trying to do what we do on WeChat, which is one single messaging app which layers a lot of services on top, right? So uh, the West has been a little bit different on how they think about it in that they have you know, one, app for, one social app for this. There's a Musical.ly for that. There's a, you know, whatever, Spotify for your music. We actually, uh, in China, we've kind of adopted a single uh, messaging platform and then putting all the services on top. So, um, so that's, if you think about us, I think there's about 800, maybe 800 million users on WeChat now. Um, that's, and QQ Mobile probably has 600 or so. Uh, I think those are the n numbers we came out with. So those are the kind of the users that are on our platform. And with that is we introduce the games on top of it. So I hope that's kind of clear, a little more clear about Tencent. So again, it's a, it's a, we, we're a social network, but it, we're putting services on top, and gaming has been the most successful one. Um, we do have entries into, uh, there's, there's a kind of a company called DD, kind of like an Uber, uh, that we, you can call your cab from there. Uh, we have financial services now that we're putting within the, the app where you can, uh, you know, if you have any financial service needs, you can do that. Uh, we have the thing called Red Envelope, which is very successful, is actually moving money back and forth between users, especially during the holidays. You have these WeChat groups and people throw in red envelopes and you can uh, grab money uh, from these envelopes. Um, so that's, that's Tencent as a base, and then again, it's, it's the gaming business. Um, so as I, as I talked about in the, in the China piece, now where we've, you know, we've become kind of the market leader there, we have to move out west. And um, do you guys know any of these strategic investments that we've made in the west? Riot. Riot, yep. You know what? Good answer. Let me give you a penguin. Uh, Epic. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember the old Gears of War company doing Gears. Uh, they do the Unreal Engine, uh, and they've just launched a game called Paragon, which is kind of like a 3D MOBA shooter. Uh, Riots for League, Supercell, we made that deal, I think it was last year, uh, getting a majority stake of Supercell. So that's Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, Boom Beach, Heyday. Uh, Rocketworks uh, is a founder by the name of, um, oh, slipped my mind now. Uh, so he, he basically he created DayZ. Um, and it's like a survival, survival genre, so he's kind of the king of, of, uh, of survival games. Uh, we have a, a position in Activision. Uh, High Res Studios does a game called uh, uh, Paragon, not, not Paragon, uh, Paladins, as well as Smite. Uh, and then Paradox, Robot, and then a couple of our mobile ones, Pocket Gems, Mini Clip, and Glue. Uh, any of you guys use Discord? Discord? So Discord, we, we made an investment in back when Jason was doing a MOBA for tablets. 
uh, and that's actually a very difficult uh, genre, I think, that he found, and he pivoted fairly well. He was the creator of OpenFaint, which also did a platform that he sold for about $100 million degree, uh, and now he's got a very successful voice app for games. He basically looked at a vertical and kind of said, we need a voice solution just for games. People were using Skype and other kind of messaging voice apps, and he basically ex spent a lot of time and made the perfect app for a gamer, uh, and Discord's doing pretty well. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Thank you.